All right, so now that the MVPs have been announced, uh, Otani winning his second MVP, Acuna, I think, winning his first, maybe, or second. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I, I forget which one, how many he's won, but uh, Otani winning his second. Extremely impressive. Where is Otani going to go? I don't think anybody really knows at this point. Um, I do think that Tops has lucked out a little bit, in my opinion, with this promo that they've done that no... Uh, which I guess they've only done it for two years, so at some point they probably... I mean, I guess that they maybe don't announce it until later on in the season, potentially. I forget what they did the past few years. But so it's the MVP buyback program. I think I think it's a phenomenal program. I mean, to be honest, like what do you really do with base cards, I think is really one of the big questions within sports cards nowadays because you like there are just so many base cards within a within a box, so... I think that the buyback program is very smart, and I think that they did a really good job kind of coming up with a concept that brings brings value to some of these cards, and not even on the secondary market. Like, it brings value to the cards that collectors already have, but it from from the company, from Tops and Fanatics. Like, it's not just from selling the cards, because, you know, if you had a Tops Chrome or a Tops uh, flagship uh, Otani or Acuna... Sure, yeah. There are probably people who speculated a little bit on those cards. I mean, it may even be an interesting speculation point over these next couple years is like people who try and buy a bunch of buy a bunch of the potential MVPs like because, you know, I was actually looking on uh, Twitter and uh, so Real Breaks Live. Uh, they accepted a a wheelbarrow worth of MVP buybacks uh, with Acuna and uh, uh, the Otani cards, and they said that the value was over $120,000 worth of cards, which is, I mean, it's impressive that someone was able to accumulate that many cards. I would be... I'd be interested to know how much they really spent on those cards. I mean, uh, uh, it's... it's, And I think uh, Real Break said they're going to come out with a video on what the customer bought with the um with the with the money that they got from these cards like i don't know i don't necessarily think it's something that you should go out and be like speculating on who's going to win the mvp the next year but it is something that like if you hypothetically if you want to buy i don't know 10 i i don't know it really depends on how you want to do it it really honestly it probably comes down to if you can guess right you'll win if you have to guess on a bunch of different players the the odds probably are not in your favor of how much you'll have to spend on the cards realistically like if you can buy the al and mv and nl mvp and you can guess correctly on those it's i mean this is actually a pretty good example of like if you're putting a bet on these players uh through like an actual sports bet through DraftKings, FanDuel, ESPN Bet Now, which is, you know, they, 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 they took the pen, they took over Pen Gaming, which used to own Barstool, but uh, it's it's basically like putting a future on those players, and uh, I think that you're able to just get the cash back on these cards. I'm pretty sure, like you know, they like I said, they they accepted a wheelbarrow worth of cards, and I would be also interested to know, like. Where is the money being made on these cards? Um, because there's got to be money made somewhere. Like I, at this point within sports cards, I think we probably know that there's no way that money is not being made somehow on all the things that are going on within within packs within cards. So I guess it's maybe. I guess it's probably the money they're assuming that if somebody gets the buyback the mvp buyback that they'll buy more cards with it like you know and and for for most people they're probably not getting a hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of cards and this is also like i said back to the point i may i making a couple minutes ago like i wonder what they paid for these cards like if they're if sure they had a wheelbarrow and if you go to uh card brokers on twitter they're the one that posted the original picture uh and then like i said real breaks they're the ones that said that they accepted the accepted the wheelbarrow worth of redemptions there are like a lot of cards in there uh and, and, and like it, it's not just like even just a one layer it looks like there's multiple and multiple layers of these cards of the otani and it looks like there's a lot of otanis in there just looking at the picture, there's a lot of Otani's on top. I, you know, I, oh, and then I see I see some of Mara Cunha's in there. But you know, like I said, I, if they spent, I don't know, 
a hundred K. I mean, this is where it's like the, the $120,000, like realistically, how much could they have spent on these cards? Like, did they spend a hundred? Did they spend, you know, 50 K like, or did they spend like, like, there's no way that they could have only spent like a thousand or $2,000 buying these cards. Like, uh, $120,000 worth of these buyback programs is a, such a significant number that, like, I would imagine it's got to be in the five, it's probably in the mid five, it, it, it's in probably in the mid five figures, realistically. Like, did they double their money? Maybe. I, I, but at the same time, it's like, these are all, like, base cards, and sure, there are some of the numbered cards that they do, uh, that they do within these uh, within this product as well it is just it's a really impressive picture and it i mean I, shout out to these people who really went all out and really took this buyback program very seriously this feels like it probably had to be like a collective of people who were probably all trying to buy these cards because there's no way that one person just was buying i guess there's i, I in my opinion I, I don't know there there honestly there could be one person that was buying all these cards but there's just so many of the cards it's like uh, what you know obviously they got $122,000 back but it's like how much money and time did they spend on these cards that's really insane and like i said i just want to give a shout out to tops here because i think it's a really cool it's it's a cool concept and i almost wish that there were other ways that they could incorporate this concept into other areas within cards i don't know i don't know how like i don't know if it's like one player per team if they could figure out like I, maybe it's like, I don't know. I, I guess it's like, I feel like there's a way to expand this program somehow. I don't know how. I think it would have to be like, maybe it's like one player per team or it's like, maybe it's like expanded to like all the candidates for MVP potentially. That could be another way. You know, let's just hope that they don't run into a scenario where you get a rookie. Uh, this is, and, and this is actually really the only scenario and this is kind of where I'll wrap up this episode. This is the only scenario that I look at realistically and say like, if this happened, Tops might run into a little bit of an issue with these cards because um, if a rookie wins MVP, that's where like you may run into a potential you may run into a potential issue there uh, where a lot of the a lot of the rookie cards are off the market. I guess, and maybe maybe that's not an issue. Maybe that's something where people who are investing in cards, like maybe that's something that they would like. They would like less of these cards to technically be in the in the potential market for people to buy. So that way their cards are maybe more valuable. I, I, I don't know exactly, but either way, like I said, Tops I think did a phenomenal job with this concept. And over the next few years, I guess I'd like to hope them, I, I'd like to see them figure out a way to expand on the program, how they're going to do it. I guess that's really up to, honestly, it's up to be determined at this point. So for the first time in maybe, I guess, a while, maybe a few years, I'm, I'm going to give a shout out to Panini here. Uh, they finally did, did something good. They are releasing Hoops, which is the product that we're going to be talking about on today's podcast because we are about a day away from the release. I think it's a November 22nd release. So that means it would be tomorrow is when the full product is going to come out. We've already seen some Wembenyana cards start to hit eBay. I'm not really sure how this product, like how these cards get into the onto eBay like this. Like I guess it must be – maybe it's retail – the people working at the retail place, like they put the product out early potentially, and they don't know that there's like a release date. There's a specific day when the cards are supposed to be released. And, you know, especially because if you're if you're working at a Target or a Walmart, at you any of these retail stores that have this, like there's so much product that they may just be like, all right, well, let's just get it all on the shelves because. First of all, there's probably a ton of product that's already on the shelves. If they're just like, oh, another new box, like let's just put it out. We don't, they don't know, whatever. So, when Mignana cards are on eBay right now, and obviously, I, I feel like this goes without saying. I'll say it with every single podcast that I talk about products like this. If you're gonna try and buy these when cards, just wait a couple weeks. I, I feel like I don't have to say that at this point, but if I can help one person not buy the card, then it's worth saying every single time one of these products gets released, every single time, because every single every single release, there is one card or two cards that end up selling for, like, 
maybe the highest that this the card ends up ever selling. Like, I remember when the Lamella Ball card came out, and this is actually, this is going to be a bit of a throwback. This was on Clubhouse. I don't know if many of you listen to Clubhouse. If you have, make sure to hit us up on <laughs> Twitter, Instagram. You'd be like, oh, Clubhouse, that was so much fun. I remember that. Now, <laughs> In a different era, this I feel like this – I actually think that that app could still be pretty relevant in my opinion. If they could have figured out I – don't, I don't know. It got it got popular. It kind of came out during like the COVID era. So it's like any of the new apps that required you to sort of stay inside – or not so required you to stay inside. But if you were inside using the app, they did pretty well. But I remember being on Clubhouse when Hoops with Lamella Ball came out. And I remember, oh no, I remember, I feel so bad now looking back at this. This guy said that he bought one of the LaMelo Ball hoops cards for like, I think he said it was like $120. And you could hear collectively everybody that was like into sports cards in the room go, oh no. Like, because everybody knew. And I mean, it was really like... He sounded like he was pretty excited that he bought the car for that price, and in my head, I think I don't think anyone really said anything about the, to him at the time. But I just remember being like, "No, dude! Like you could have gotten those cards. Like right now, you could probably buy a hundred and twenty-five for twenty, one hundred twenty-five dollars. Like you probably can buy those Lamella Ball cards for like a dollar or two. If like, there's no way that they're more than five dollars at this point because like." Like I said, that the Hoops product, I think, is an underrated product. I think that they make a ton of it, so maybe that's where the under underratedness, and I don't even know if that's a word, but the underratedness maybe potentially goes away. But the first packed product with players in their new uniform, I don't know. There's just something in my head that I'm, I'm looking at that product, and it's like, you know, you know that that's the first product, like, you know that that's the first card that's going to come out of a pack for that player of an of them in their new uniform. It's just something about like the the new year. And I think I actually shoot. I think I forgot to give the shout out to Panini that I wanted to at the beginning of the episode because well, basically the shout out was that they're coming out with this product in November, where the past few years they've come out with it in like late December, early January, when it's like the season's almost half over. Like I don't think anybody like I think the Celtics they lost. Last night, I think. So I think that they're now like eight and four or, or nine and three. I forget their exact record, but it's like nobody has. We're still very early into the season, and there are NBA cards coming out because if you have heard me talk about football and the football release schedule, I absolutely hate it. I hate the fact that we're just starting to really get products of these new players uh, for 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 football in their new uniforms. Like we're more than way more than halfway through the season like if I had to I think we're in week 11 or 12 so it's like we're way past the halfway point now they're coming out with this product I'm not sure I don't know I'm uh, I don't know if they switched the release date or what exactly happened here because like I said with I'm just thinking back like back in time like I think November basketball used to be a prism release because I remember I remember the Zion Prism coming out in 20, I guess that would have been 2019. I remember it coming out like way before COVID happened. So actually, no, wait, could it have been? Actually, now that I'm thinking about that, actually, that might even have been before. Because now that I'm thinking about it, Prism Basketball released during COVID for LaMelo Ball and they had to shut down. PSA. So sorry, maybe I'm getting my timelines mixed up a little bit, but I looked up the dates for hoops. So hoops for 2020, 2022 hoops was released in January of 2023. So they're coming out with this first hoops product in November of 2023. So two, two hoops products in one year, hopefully, I don't know, hopefully 10 years down the road, that doesn't confuse people. I don't, I don't think it should, but either way, I, I think, you know, the Wembenyana card is obviously going to be pretty important card um but i don't know there's just something about like the like and and also i'll preface this by saying don't buy the cards right now wait a little bit maybe buy a couple maybe get a couple graded uh because now grading honestly has gotten to a point where it's actually kind of reasonable to get stuff graded now like if you're going to a show where psa is there and you can drop it off 
it's very reasonably priced, in my opinion, like for bulk orders, obviously. So you have to, you do sort of have to spend a lot of money to get cards graded because you have to get a bunch of cards graded in order to use that bulk pricing. But either way, just wait a little bit before you go out and buy these Wembenyana cards. But it's exciting because it's the start of the, you know, it's the start of the new basketball season for basketball cards. And Hoops is, I don't know, I just wish that maybe... I don't know. I feel like there was, I wish there was a way that maybe we could brand hoops a little bit differently or figure out a way to almost like Panini to make it like the start of the season somehow. And I guess, you know, Panini obviously doesn't, they have basketball and football. So it's like, they can't really focus all of their branding on one sport. But at the same time, it's like basketball has been so important over the past few years that the release of hoops every single year of it being the first product, and you know that's the first product, seems like it should be a bit of a bigger deal than it is. But I don't know. At the same time, they're paper cards. Like there are tons of other products that come out during the year. But either way, in the next day or so, we're going to see more of those Wembenyana cards start to hit eBay. More of the, more of the other rookies as well. I mean, obviously Wembenyana is the <laughs> the big name coming out of this draft. But but either way. Wembenyana cards, they're officially starting to come out. Very excited. Check eBay if you're looking for them. I'd say wait a couple weeks, but if you want to go crazy and buy any, there should be some available in the next few days. So the big news a couple weeks ago was Sotheby's actually announced they're going to be basically partnering with the NBA to be sort of like the go-to place to buy game-worn jerseys. And... For, for NBA, and I, or uh, mostly NBA, I think right now, they may add other jerseys, but right now they're basically uh, really focused on the NBA, and they're kind of, I think from what I've seen, they're really trying to push a lot of like the like rookie jerseys and like jerseys from important games, like the player basically will, you know, wear the game in the jersey, and then it'll go directly to Sotheby's, so the big jersey that they kind of were debuting this new program that they have was going to be or is was I guess because it sold was Victor Wembanyama's uh, game worn rook jersey from his debut, which it sold for like way over what they estimated. Uh, it sold for seven hundred and sixty two thousand dollars. Now, I think that's probably going to be. I would say that there's a chance that that jersey could be worth more. I think it probably will be worth more, at least within the next year, like within the rookie year of cards, it's definitely going to be the most expensive piece of memorabilia that he has realistically. Like I don't, I don't foresee any of his sports cards this year selling for that much. Even, you know, even the one of one coming out of like, even the one of one coming out of national treasures, like I don't see, that jersey selling. I don't I don't see that card selling for over a million. Like I or maybe it'll sell for a million. Like I could see that one being really the only card that in my opinion has the chance to sell for over that price tag. Uh the other one over the weekend, a Tom Brady jersey sold for 1.4 million dollars, making it the most expensive football jersey of all time ever sold. Um now I did also see an interesting video. So Emmett Smith, and this was kind of this was actually very interesting. Emmett Smith, and I'm wondering, I'm wondering how often something like this happens within memorabilia. Like I guess it probably not super often. Like maybe, like maybe it maybe like okay. So what happened? Sorry, so I was getting off track, and then we'll get back into how often I think it happens. So Emmett Smith, the 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 game that he broke the record, the rushing record, he said that he wore four different jerseys throughout the entire game for each quarter. He changed out his cleats. He changed out like basically all of his equipment all throughout the game because I you know he came into the game only needing a couple yards, so he knew that he was going to break the record that game. So like the one like he was saying in the one it got one got um sent to the Hall of Fame. He kept one of the jerseys. I think he sold one of the jerseys and then he uh and then he and then he kept one for his foundation which they sold. So I'm wondering like how often that's really happening within modern day stuff. Like there has to be probably some rule after that happened maybe that doesn't happen 
or maybe like there's maybe in the half they switch jerseys or something like that, and the player gets to keep the jersey because like what are the chances that they do like a jersey swap? Now I would imagine for Wembenyana's jersey, they probably told him beforehand like, hey, you can't do a jersey swap. Like we need this jersey. This is important. All of these things that you know, partnering with Sotheby's, whatever. But that car, you know, that jersey selling for seven hundred thousand dollars, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars is definitely going to be up there, at least top one or two memorabilia pieces of his sold, maybe potentially throughout his whole entire career. I would say, depending on if, you know, if he goes on and has a great career, obviously, I think that's kind of without saying that's obviously, if he goes on and does that, we're going to see probably more prices and more, more things. But I think, and I don't think this is really even a hot take, if I'm going to be honest here. Like, I just think that maybe game-worn jerseys are more valuable than sports cards like and I know that's kind of crazy to say like I don't have a million dollars I don't have you know whatever a hundred thousand dollars I don't really have like I'm not spending crazy money on sports cards but like if I have if I have a million dollars to spend on something if it's if a memorabilia piece I'm probably going with honestly like a game worn jersey like maybe getting maybe I would go like game worn jersey and a card like figure out a way to split up the money but if i had to choose one or the other i think i'm going jersey i mean the jersey is much easier to explain to somebody why you paid the amount than a card it's also much easier to 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 display like it's if there's there are a ton of reasons why i think these jerseys probably are worth more than cards uh and that's why i think that i don't know i think it would be interesting if Tops did like a if they included or I don't think Panini would be able to do that to do this at this point but if like once fanatics take once fanatics and tops take over those licenses I actually think that they should be incorporating full jerseys a lot more like and I get that you want the card you want all these things but it's like they're doing this with the redemptions for the um they're doing this with the redemptions for the one of one rookie debut patches so like they could come up with a card design and then have that be a redemption for a jersey. Like, it just, to me, that makes a lot of sense. And to me, like, that would just make, I don't know, include a card with it somehow. Like, include, like, a full jersey with a card, maybe, like, an oversized card or something, or maybe just a regular card or multiple cards. I don't know what it is, but jerseys just have to get more involved, I think, in sports cards. Because... I just think that there's more value there for a jersey. Like, the person buying Wembenyana, like, there literally will only be one Victor Wembenyana debut jersey. There will only be one Tom Brady final game jersey. Like, these are literal one-of-one one art pieces. And I think also you look at the fact that Sotheby's is taking over some of these sales. I think that they are... They're looking at these as art pieces now. Like, I just think that that's kind of what we're seeing. Like, sports art, I think, is going to be something that in the next few years, there's potential that we may see more more and more sports art come into popular culture just because of the fact that, like like I said, there's only one of these jerseys for each of these players. There's only one one of one. There aren't going to be more jerseys that sell for Tom Brady of his last game. Because I, unless they did the thing, I don't think that they did the thing that Emmett Smith does anymore. But like, if they did that, then you know maybe there's a chance that there's multiple of them. I don't think so. But you know, I also think it's going to. I'm wondering where the ownership lies for those jerseys. Like, is it the player that owns the jersey? Is it the team that owns the jerseys? Like, does does Sotheby's just literally own the jerseys? Like, do they own, like, they say that they're going to get this jersey. Do they own that jersey now? Like, or is that, a, is it the player's jersey? I think that's also an interesting conversation that could be had. Like, who owns the jerseys after it gets worn? Like, does, should the player get it? Like, I don't really know. I mean, it, it, I don't know. That's kind of another question that I think is interesting that we'll see, I guess, maybe people talk about over the next few years. I don't know. It's really not even something that was on my radar until, like, just now. I think, like I said, we're going to see, I hope they incorporate more jerseys into sports cards somehow. And we've seen that Topps has done 
They've changed the way that they can do redemptions. Like they can make cards look like redemptions. We've seen the Taco Fractor. That's a redemption card. We've seen these types of things. We've seen cards become redemptions that are not just the ugly redemptions, which I'm super, I'm extremely glad they're doing that. Uh, that's, I think, a big step in the right direction. And I think, I'm hoping that Tops over the next few years, when they, they see that these jerseys are selling for these crazy amounts, maybe they're able to include those in products. Maybe they're, um, you know, maybe they're able to, like, instead of it, like, maybe there's two different types of authentication they can do. They can do, like, the authentication that's play, that is game worn, they show the game. But then also, maybe there's a type of authentication they can do where it's like, we also bought this jersey. Here's the authentication from whatever, Sotheby's or whatever auction house they bought the jersey from. I think that would also be a cool possibility. Uh, two, I mean, massive jerseys, kind of on the almost the opposite sides of the spectrum, which I think is kind of interesting as well. You know, Wembenyana first jersey, Brady last jersey, the spectrum obviously huge on opposite ends, uh, but two massive, massive jersey sales over the past few weeks. Comp C does a good job at putting out information about about the cards that have sold on their site, I think. Um, I do wish that there was there was a little bit of a better way on their site to see these players. Like, you know, I wish that, I, I I get that they can come out with the data and show people, and they're pretty good at showing people most of the time. And I think this data, if I had to guess, it's probably from the month of November, just based on some of the players that are on the list. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if it's like from this past year because it doesn't say in the post. But like I said, based on the players in the list, I would have to imagine it's probably from uh, probably from the month of November. So first, we're going to start with baseball since baseball is over. Uh, number five, we have Joran Alvarez. Number four, Aaron Judge. Number three, Ronald Acuna. Number two, Mike Trout. And then number one, Shohei Otani. I don't think there's anybody really super surprising on that list. I mean... Three, two, and one are probably who you would imagine would be the tops. Oh, it is last week. Sorry, the post, the the the, the graphics says last week, so that that does make a lot of sense. With you know, with Trout being such a big name, obviously, and him having so many cards and being in basically every single insert set, and him just having a, so many cards probably on the site as well. And then uh, Otani and Acuna recently winning uh, the MVPs for their respective leagues. Now we're going to switch over to hockey, and shout out to number five here, Jeremy Swayman. That's the Bruins goalie, so it is pretty interesting to see a Bru a goalie on this list because I don't know if goalies are necessarily like how pitchers are in the MLB. They definitely don't get as much credit uh, if if we're talking, you know, goalies, defenders, offender or, or offensive players within hockey. They're probably third on that tier list. Uh, but so Jeremy Swayman, number five, Alexander Ovechkin. Uh, Quinn Hughes, Sidney Crosby, and then Connor McDavid at number one. I guess I, I'm kind of surprised that Bedard isn't on the list, even though he doesn't have that many cards. That's probably the reason why he's not on this list. If this is, you know, if this list comes out, I don't know, middle of January, Connor Bedard is definitely going to be on that list. Uh, for basketball, I do not know who this person is. Uh, Alfred uh, Seguin. I think, I don't know who that is, if I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, Tyrese Maxey, uh, Anthony Edwards, Giannis, and then LeBron are, are, are who is going to round out that list. Uh, I'm just going to quickly, Alfran, I, I feel like, no, it's just a, it's just a Houston Rockets player. I, I, I like I said, I don't know. I thought it was like you know how um, Penny Hardaway. His real name is not Penny Hardaway. So like on Comp C, if you're looking for Penny Hardaway cards, you got to look for what his real name is. I forget exactly. I forget exactly what the name you'd be looking for is. But if you search Penny Hardaway, you should be able to find stuff. But th when you're searching for Penny Hardaway, it's going to give you a suggested other name, and I think you got to look for that other name because of the way that Comp C's database works. And then the big, um, I think the, probably the biggest category right now, just because when football is going on, I think, yeah, basketball and hockey are popular sports, but, like, football is just really, like, the king, like, when it comes to, not really cards, but when it comes to the sports that everyone's watching uh, while football season's going on, obviously because you basically can watch all the games in one day. I would say that's probably the reason. It is sort of remarkable that they haven't figured out I guess it's because, 
other sports have not figured out a way to capitalize on one day the same way that the NFL does on Sunday. It's probably it's probably because there's more games or there's more uh, there's more games in the season with with football. There's only you know 18 weeks of the season, so you're only really looking at 17 games for each team. So it's easier to schedule on one day versus you know basketball, hockey. There's multiple games in a week, but if I don't know. I think if one of these sports were smart, they would capitalize on, like, I mean, if I'm going to be honest, they would capitalize on, like, Wednesday. I would say Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday if these teams really focused on taking one of those days, whether it's basketball or hockey. I think that there's a chance that they could swoop in and take one of those days for their own. I get, you know, Saturdays for college football, Sundays for pro football, but I don't know, and I and I get that most of the time Wednesdays and Fridays are the big days for for basketball. There are some early games and there are some weekend games, but for the most part, a lot of the big games, you know, you're going to see Wednesday and Friday, but not not in the same way that the NFL is. So the NFL list is going to go Justin Jefferson, uh, number five, Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, Patrick Mahomes, and then C.J. Shroud, another name that we probably shouldn't be surprised about. He is like shooting up the MVP ladder here. And with, you know, he has cards like that are coming out, but he has more, more of his base cards are coming out in the next few months. So if I'm going to be honest, I would expect CJ Shroud to be the number one traded player through, through the next few months, just because of the fact of how well he's playing and the way that the season is going. And if the Titans keep doing what they're doing, and if he keeps playing how he's playing, I think it's going to be really hard for a player to come in in the NFL and really overtake C.J. Shroud on the top of that football list.